His Excellency, Mr. Al Gore, the 45th Vice President of the United States of America and the Founder and Chairman of the Climate Reality Project. His Excellency, Bapak Professor Ahmad Witular, the President Special Envoy on Climate Change of Indonesia. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. First of all, uh, on behalf of the Indonesia Pavilion at COP24 UNFCCC, as well as uh, the climate leader of the, the climate reality of Indonesia, I would like to welcome you all here at the Indonesian Pavilion. As you all may already know that uh, Indonesia Pavilion is one of the busiest pavilion in the Sportec Arena during the COP24 UNFCCC. Well, today we are busier, we crowded and warmer than yesterday. However, I believe all of us here are very happy and very excited to listen to His Excellency Mr. Al Gore. Your Excellency Mr. Al Gore, thank you so much for your time and kindness to visit to Indonesian Pavilion for the third time starting at the Indonesian Pavilion in Paris in 2015, in Bonn 2017, and now here in the, this lovely city of Katowice. We believe that you always inspiring to all of us here, not only on the climate action, but also showing us that we must do something now. As you mentioned that the reality we now face implores us to act. Your Excellency, Mr. Al Gore, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for visiting the Indonesian Pavilion. And now I'm requesting Bapak Professor Rahmat Witular, the Presi President's Special Envoy on Climate Change of Indonesia, to deliver his brief messages on behalf of the Government of Indonesia. Pak Rahmat, the floor is yours. Thank you. Dear Al Gore, welcome to the happy family of Indonesia and friends. Give an appreciation. You are not strangers to Indonesia. In fact, when I we met, when I met you in Bali, uh, Al Gore supported the Bali uh, COP twice because in between sessions, Al Gore was awarded the Nobel Prize, and then you flew to Norway and you come back. So he spent there twice at one cup. Congratulations. And of course, we always find opportunity for you to come here. If you say we're, you're late, we've, we've been here since in the morning, waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's never too late for a good friend. So you see this, uh, this uh, handy for the climate related project is very much alive in the whole world, especially in Indonesia. And we have the alumni here, including Pa Agusius, and regards from Amanda Katilu, who has to leave, and other friends. Well, you're making very uh, great progress in that, and I hope that you will enlighten us further of to what has happened. It is a sad uh, moment for the world that a lot of com a lot of complications are there. We want to hear your view on that and how we can overcome it. Thank you again. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is such a great honor to once again visit the Indonesia Pavilion. This is indeed the third time that I have had the honor of participating in events here. And I want to thank all, uh, Professor, thank you, and for the leaders of the Climate Reality Project in Indonesia. My heart is filled with gratitude for the many young people who are here. We are counting on you. Uh, it is the young generation, the young rising generation is demanding a better future and a better world. 
and it is the job of this conference here in Katowice uh, to meet your expectations, and I hope that we shall do so. I want to particularly thank all of the Indonesian climate reality leaders who are here, and I want to thank you for the hard work that you have been doing consistently for many years now. So we meet at a time when the world community is taking stock of how we can solve this crisis. We meet three years after the historic Paris Agreement, which filled us all with hope, and that hope is still alive. And in this meeting, we have the task of completing a, a rule book and uh, developing agreement on transparency standards, and uh, we ha must work on a number of other agenda items. But we meet also at a time when Mother Nature is speaking ever more loudly, warning us that this climate crisis is getting worse, and it is getting worse faster than we are yet innovating and developing and implementing solutions to the climate crisis. Today, we around the world will put another 110 million tons of man-made heat-trapping global warming pollution into the atmosphere. As you know, the atmosphere is a very thin shell surrounding the planet, and we are using it as an open sewer. This must stop, because the accumulated amount of heat-trapping pollution now traps as much extra heat energy every day as would be released by 500,000 Hiroshima-class atomic bombs exploding every 24 hours. It's a big planet, but that's an enormous amount of energy. And it is increasing temperatures quite dramatically. Uh, it is melting the ice. Just two days ago, a major scientific report uh, told us that 95% of the permanent ice in the Arctic Ocean has gone. And the annual cover that comes back in winter is also thinning. Also, the land-based ice in Greenland and Antarctica is melting and decaying, breaking up and slipping into the sea at a much faster rate. Indonesians know the threat that is faced by Jakarta as the land subsides and the sea level rises. Many other communities, also the low-lying island nations in the Pacific, uh, part of Indonesia, some 1,500 islands of Indonesia are in danger of disappearing. Large cities such as uh, Calcutta and Mumbai, Guangzhou, Shanghai, New York, Newark, Miami, West Africa, the southern parts of Bangladesh, and many other locations around the world are in danger of seeing their populations forced to move and find other homes. The same extra heat is increasing the amount of water vapor coming off the oceans and filling the sky with moisture that falls over the land in these much larger rainstorms. Many scientists are calling them rain bombs and the flooding and mudslides that result are claiming many lives. The change in precipitation patterns is disrupting agriculture. And we're also seeing a, the spread of tropical diseases as mosquitoes and ticks and other vectors of these diseases expand their ranges in a warmer and wetter world. We're seeing the ocean-based storms, the typhoons that do such damage get stronger and more destructive. We're also seeing in the flight of people from areas where extreme heat makes their ancestral homelands unlivable, a flow of refugees 
that is larger than at any time since the years immediately after World War II. And this has political consequences. It disrupts stability. India has just completed the largest steel fence in the world on its southern border with Bangladesh. Syria, which suffered a, the worst uh, drought in the history of the Eastern Mediterranean before the Civil War began in Syria, has seen an outflow of refugees that have destabilized Europe. We see a wave of populist authoritarianism in many countries, including the Philippines, including Hungary, including here in Poland, including in my country with Donald J. Trump, who has become the global face of climate denial. So we face many challenges. But there is good news. There are solutions now. Ten years ago, we could dream of these solutions, and we could be encouraged by the engineers who promised us that they would soon be available. Now they are available. And the electricity produced from the sun and the wind is cheaper than electricity being produced from coal. So we must stop building new, dirty, coal-burning plants all around the world, including in Indonesia, including in Vietnam, including in all countries. Because the way to create more jobs is now to accelerate this transition to a sustainable economy. We are in the early stages of a sustainability revolution, which has the magnitude of the industrial revolution but the speed of the digital revolution. It is powered in part by the new digital tools of the Internet of Things, machine learning, artificial intelligence, big data, supercomputers, that are giving, these tools are giving executive teams and businesses and industries the ability to manage electrons and atoms and molecules with the same precision that the information technology companies have used in managing bits of information. In my country, the fastest growing job is solar installer. That job is growing nine times faster than other jobs in the economy. The second fastest growing job is wind turbine technician. We could have the greatest source of new jobs in history by committing to the retrofit of buildings with LEDs and better windows and better insulation. We see the pathway forward. We know it leads toward a solution for the climate crisis and a more sustainable, peaceful, and cleaner future. But we have a choice to make. Given the crisis, given the solutions, we need the policies that will stop the subsidies for burning fossil fuels and destroying our future and replace them with policies that will speed up the transition to a brighter and more hopeful future. Indonesia can play a critical role in building this future. As the fifth largest uh, emitter of greenhouse gases, uh, China and the U.S. are first, uh, of course, Indonesia has a, an extremely important role to play. I am very proud to have the opportunity to work with you and with the Climate Reality Project in Indonesia to move policies in the right direction. So I will close by offering these words of encouragement and hope. This process here is part of a larger global effort to solve the climate crisis. We will make some progress. We made a lot of progress in Paris. But two years from now, we will have the key milestone when nations around the world are called upon to increase their ambition and set more ambitious goals and speed up the process of solutions. I believe that two years from now, uh, the United States will return to the world community 
with a restoration of its traditional leadership role. Take heart from the fact that even though Donald J. Trump has announced he wants the U.S. to withdraw from the Paris Agreement, under the law, he cannot do that until the first day after the next presidential election. So the decision is still in the hands of the people. Uh, and if there is a new president, excuse me for a moment, <laughs> then a new president can simply give 30 days notice and the U.S. will immediately return to the Paris Agreement. I will bring you news from the United States. Last month, at the beginning of November, the elections brought a big change in our Congress. And here is the significance of that change. Statistically, it was the biggest repudiation of a sitting president in the entire history of the United States in a midterm election. Maybe it will mean that the elections less than two years from now will bring a similar change. I will also say, and I perhaps should not say this, but I will, <laughs> this experiment with Trumpism is not going well. And in science and medicine, some experiments are terminated early for ethical reasons. We may see changes in the United States even before the 2020 election. But even now, states like California and New York and Washington and Oregon and many others are providing the leadership that should be coming from Washington. California, if it were a nation, would be the fifth largest economy in the world. And it has just passed a law requiring that California become zero carbon by the year 2045. And they're already beginning this transformation. California has a well-established record of actually doing what it pledges to do. Washington State is now joining California. Colorado is joining California. Hundreds of cities have committed to 100% renewable energy. A good number have already achieved that goal. 140 global companies have announced their commitment to 100% renewable energy. Some, like Apple, have already achieved that goal. We are moving forward. We must move forward faster. But I will close by reminding you that anyone who believes that we as human beings, whether Indonesians or Americans or Chinese or Norwegians, we as, if you doubt that we as human beings have the political will to face this challenge and solve this crisis, please remember that political will is itself a renewable resource. Thank you very much. Thank you, Indonesia. Yes. Of course, we are very thankful for your presence here. Although it's only a few minutes, we have been waiting. So, uh, to compensate, can, would you like to take a picture with all of us? Just stand here. Okay. Just stand here. Somebody take uh, that. Why don't I stand there and put the yeah, photographer up there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Foto dulu.